It's the world's most popular sport. And in 2023, more football games are being broadcast globally than ever before. But how is the way that we consume the game changing? And what could it look like in the future? Hello there and welcome to Football Now from Doha. Now, many research studies have almost conclusively proved over the years that football is the most watched sport on the planet. According to Nielsen data, over 40% of the world's population claim to be a fan of the game. From the Champions League to the FIFA World Cup, from League Earth to your local Sunday League pitch, wherever you look, you can't escape it. The game is broadcasted into an average of 643 million homes annually, while FIFA estimate that a record 1.5 billion people watched the Qatar World Cup final last year live on TV. That figure dwarfs the size of audiences watching other popular sports. The 2022 NFL Super Bowl in Los Angeles attracted a global reach of 153 million. The 2021 Formula One season finale in Abu Dhabi drew in an audience of 108.7 million, whilst the final day of the 2022 Masters in Augusta was seen by 13.1 million. The world's most popular division is the Premier League, which boasted a 4.7 billion annual audience in 2020. La Liga is the next most popular, but with over a billion less, watching at 3.5 billion. The Women's Super League had 22 million unique viewers last year as part of a 131% rise in audience for women's sport on the whole from 2021. I think football, it's really watchable because it brings people together. You can watch a football match on your couch with your family and your friends, or alone, of course, but basically with, with people. And then I think another thing that makes football really popular is that it's easy to understand. I mean, the rules are not so complicated as in sports, as in baseball or rugby, that are quite complicated to understand. Football, it's, re it's really easy. And uh, as Pele said, it's a beautiful game. <laughs> So then the growth of interest in the sport is showing no signs of slowing down. But the way we consume the game is beginning to change, starting with a unique broadcasting deal that will make one league easier to access than ever before. Earlier this year, Apple TV began showing the MLS on their streaming service. For around €95, Euros, fans can have access to every single league game throughout the season. So the most important thing, I guess, to keep in mind is that it's a global deal, which hasn't really been done too much, at least in football. So it's a 10-year global deal, Apple will be showing it in every single country. And as a part of that, they're really trying to promote the league as well, because the MLS is known outside the US, but it's not something which someone's gonna watch on the weekend in Europe, for example. So it's very high quality, and they're clearly showing they're willing to spend a lot of money to make the product very, very good, and hope that is enough to draw people in around the world. So according to some, streaming football online could be the future. But how would this enhance the fan experience and make the sport more accessible? Sometimes uh, you, don't have, uh, you don't have a TV, so you have internet and it's easier to watch it. So for the younger generations, I think uh, uh, they are more uh, prone to internet than TV. So uh, I think they, they are the, like the engine that is gonna bring the internet streaming becoming so popular. Uh, also because it's more uh, interactive, uh, for sure, because you have uh, some content that you can't uh, choose on TV. So for sure, it could become the, uh, the future of football, but I think we don't have to underestimate the dear old TV. Let's now talk about fan channels. 10 years ago, they were just a small part of the broadcasting experience, but now almost every professional club has a podcast or YouTube channel. Now, whether it's high profile interviews with former players, the thoughts of a supporter after a game, or live streaming reactions to those matches themselves, the rise of this medium is undoubted and it's very much here to stay. The evolution of fan media over the last, well, for me, 13 years, um, 13 years plus, uh, it's been genuinely incredible, you know, it's gone from back bedroom benches to full on multinational streaming media companies, broadcast quality cameras, you know, global reach. We're in the watch along era of football, really.
and it was COVID that really brought that on. I mean, we couldn't go to the games anymore. We still had to make content for what was still happening, but it was happening on, on the television. And watch alongs helped to fill that void for the viewer and for content creators as well. It's a brilliant way to interact with the viewers and that's something that doesn't exist in the mainstream. It's a, it's still a very one-way experience. You turn the television on, you consume the content that's on the television and then you walk away from it. But YouTube, it, it is that two-way street. It means that you can have that live interaction with people. The biggest next challenge I think is legacy. And I think it's how can the original people involved in those channels how can they take, do they want to take a next step or can they take a next step? Can those channels survive without those people? Can United Stand survive without Mark Goldbridge? Can Red Men TV survive without me and Chris Page? Can Arsenal Fan TV survive without Robbie Lyle? Um, and that will be a really interesting challenge because if they can get past that hurdle, then there's no reason why these channels and fan media in general won't hang around forever. Yeah, it certainly is an interesting period for football in the media, isn't it? That is us out of time for this week's show. Do let us know your thoughts at home using the hashtag FootballNowBroadcasting, and we'll see you next week. Bye for now.